everyone, welcome to my review for the Catalyst, a Rogue One novel book, or novel, I guess. This is written by James Lucino, and it came out last year. Uh, James Lucino has been writing like a lot of Star Wars books. He wrote quite a few that are in Legends, and now he's written um, Tarkin and, <clears throat> and this one. Obviously, um, he also wrote the Darth Plagueis book that I read, like, last year, I think. Yeah, it was last year. And so, James Lucino is, like, really good. He's he's obviously written, like I said, he just he's written a lot of Star Wars, and I feel like he really gets the Star Wars universe. And, like, throughout all of his books, because I've read Tarkin, too, and in that one and in this one, he does a very good job of giving us... A story that feels like it's in the Star Wars verse. It, he, when he uses characters that we've seen in movies, he gives us those characters the way they are. Is it good? Is this one good? Yes, this one is awesome. I think, I think it's really good. Um, there's not, and there's not a lot of like battles to it, which is which is very understandable because this movie is a lead up to Rogue One, and in Rogue One we get the battles, and in Rogue One we get you know all the, we get the climax, if you will, of this particular story, and so this book centers around Galen, Galen and Lyra Urso, the mother and father of Jin, and then we have a, a young Jin for the most part of the book. In the beginning of the book, uh, it opens up towards the end of the Clone Wars, and Jin hasn't been born yet. Her mother is pregnant, Lyra is pregnant with her, but Jin hasn't been born yet. And so, for the most part, you have Jin in there, in the book, and she's her own character. But in the in the first, I think, few chapters, she is, she is, uh, She's not, she is in the womb of her mother, and we actually get the, we get a little bit about how she was born. She was just born in, in a, in a, like a palace room, because in the beginning of the book, um, Galen is working on uh, energy and energy resources, I guess, but he's working on a neutral world, and since it's the Clone Wars, he, like, Galen is one of these characters that is a very, um, very neutral guy. He doesn't want to be helping out with the military in any way, and so that's why he goes to this neutral, or he's on this neutral world, helping them out. But they join the Separatists, and so they throw him in jail because he refuses to work for them anymore because he's like, hey, you guys, you know, I don't work for people who are in the military or who are involved with military actions and so they wanted they had wanted him to start working on uh, weapons and so he was just like no I'm not gonna do it so they throw him in prison and so he wasn't there for the birth of Jin and it's a very it's a very good uh, backstory to these characters but you also have Orson Krennic in this book and he is done very good he's my favorite character from Rogue One the movie and in this book, it does not it does not take away anything from that movie. In fact, it enhances it because we get, you know, what what he's up to and what he is really. I had no idea that he was an engineer. Like he's he um, went to school. There's this thing called the um, the school of engineer or yeah, the school of engineers uh, on Coruscant. And Galen was like a super genius when he was a kid. But he met Orson Krennic in that school, and so it's pretty. We get a lot of what's happening, and then we also get Tarkin, and I mean James James Lucino wrote the book Tarkin, so he knows how to write Tarkin like brilliantly. And these two characters, it is so cool because it doesn't change anything in the movie Rogue One. We have these two characters that are kind of they have the power play. They are undermining each other or they're trying to they're trying to get at the other person, but you know, within the Empire. And this book does it very well where Orson Krennic, you know, outwits him outwits Tarkin at one point and then vice versa. Tarkin does the same thing to him at one point. It is very cool. 
the premise, I mean, the premise of this movie, like our book, like I said, is the lead up to Rogue One. And so we get a lot of what's happening. We even get some Saw Gerrera in this, which I'll talk about later. But the things that I liked about this book was that it was very, very good setup for the movie. Even though, like, looking back on the movie, because I, I don't know how... I don't know if my opinion would change if I read the book before I saw the movie because it did come out before I saw before the movie came out but I was just I didn't I was at back then I wasn't super into reading books and I was like you know what I'm gonna hold off reading the Star Wars books but in the past year since Rogue One came out I've been like yeah I want to get these books and so when it when this I don't know if my opinion would change, but it this is an amazing setup of a book for Rogue One, the movie. And we get a lot of the Ursos, you know, Jin's parents, which is so cool because in the movie, you don't get a lot of them. Uh, Galen is in there for a few minutes, and then Lyra is in there for literally like five minutes. She's in there for three scenes. And it's really this this book gives so much backstory and so much um, so much fleshed out story and it just feels so good and it, it's very it's very well done for giving us you know this is the history of these characters and this is why they are where they are in in the beginning of Rogue One it is so cool and Krennic and Tarkin like I said there's just their power plays over each other is so awesome I did like finding out that Krennic was an engineer and that he knew uh Galen Erso from the college from not college but the the school of engineers uh and that he in the beginning like I said Galen was in prison well Krennic busted him out of prison he was with at that point the uh the the galactic no the the not the empire what was before the republic yeah galen was with the republic and uh, not galen uh krennic was with the republic and he found out that galen was imprisoned on the separatist world and he was like you know what that dude's pretty smart back then i bet you he's gotten a lot smarter and so krennic breaks him out of prison from the separatist um from the separatist planet and he he uses a mercenary by the name of Hass Obit, and he's a brand new character this, to the Star Wars universe, and he is only in this only in this book, I think, as far as I know. And he is cool, man. This character is is one of the cooler characters because he does some amazing things in this book. Like he he literally plays Krennic and Tarkin at the same time towards the end of the book. He he messes with Krennic by by helping out the Ursos escape from from the Empire and he also plays Tarkin by not giving him the whereabouts of where the Ursos are and it's so awesome to see this character of Has Obit is so cool and he has direct contact and he has ties to Saw Gerrera which is super awesome because the way we find out that Saw Gerrera um, meets the Ursos and Jin knows about him is because Saw Gerrera was the one that you know took them to to help them escape from the Empire and it was so good to see and it shows like there's one scene in the or there's one um, particular uh, dialogue in the towards the very end of the book where it is a it shows Saw Gerrera and he's talking and he's telling the Ursos you know you guys are my inspiration you guys are my heroes you people renouncing the Empire like it gives me the the strength to go and it gives me the want to it gives me the motivation to go and fight the Empire to expose the Empire for what it truly is and it's such an awesome awesome uh it's like an awesome scene in the book and it's just beautifully played out like I said James Lucino does an amazing job in this book and what he does is he has uh, Mass Amita do something you know the blue guy who's always with a uh, Palpatine in the prequels the blue dude with the horns yeah that dude does something in this and he's actually important because he's the one who's setting up everything between Orson Krennic and Galen and he's he's the one 
who's like, yo, if this guy knows about kyber crystals, we should give him some kyber crystals so he can figure out how we can get this big old laser on the Death Star. And it, like, I have, I've read, I think almost all of the canon books. Um, now, I think like Ahsoka and uh, like uh, Heir to the Jedi are the only ones that I haven't read so far. And like, this is the first time we actually get something with Mas Amida where he's doing something, where he's influential, which like he's not just relaying things from the Emperor. It feels like he's you know he's smart enough to be there, which totally makes sense because if the Emperor just had a loser. Um, as as his uh grand visery or whatever you call it his his right hand dude then the emperor i feel like the emperor would be like why do i need you and just like get rid of him but masamita in this book do does something and it's really cool and also we get like hints of vader in this book and it's so cool because it's done through krennic's uh point of view and his thought process and he's like okay so like if I get this promotion, like, then maybe I'll be on that same level of Tarkin and Vader because, like, and it just shows, like, Vader, and he's heard, Krennic has heard stories about people, like, Imperial officers who have had, you who have been on the wrong side of Vader, and it's awesome just to see, like, there's this, you, it's like, he's still there, you know, don't forget about Vader. He's at a, at the height of his power, and Krennic knows it. And Krennic is almost at one point. It feels like he's um, a little bit scared, and then at at other points, it's like he it, when when he's talking about the Death Star and what what Galen is doing as far as the Kyber crystals. There's one point where he's like, "This Death Star once completed." will be far beyond anything that vader could do and it was just like oh man he wants to be better than everybody he wants to be at the top like he wants to be he, he wants to have the ear of the emperor and it's just so cool to see krennic be exactly the same character that we see in the movie and that's so good like the lucasfilm does such an amazing job of having the characters that we see on screen they're the same characters that we get in the books or in in the tv shows it's so good i love what they're doing with this and i just i loved krennic like he's my favorite character in rogue one and he's my favorite character in this book but a, my my close second is lyra man lyra is the like she's the one who starts to doubt Krennic, like, in the whole Urso family, I mean, there's only two of them, but Galen's, like, for the most part, he's oblivious until, like, the last half an hour of the book, he's literally oblivious to, or not, like, last 40 minutes of the book, because I audio, audio, I audible did, and so, Galen is literally oblivious to what Krennic is doing to him, and with him, and using him and Lear is the one who figures out that what's going on and has Obed uh, uh, Krennic uh, allows has Obed to take Lyra on an expedition to go see if they can find they have this planet and it has a bunch of like crystals but they don't know if it's kyber crystals or not and so they had Krennic has has Obed take Lyra Urso to go see and to to see if these are kyber crystals but then on the way back they're like Lyra asks has Obed to go to these planets these systems that uh, that she had previously had expeditions to and found out that there were kyber crystals there and so when she when they go to those systems they find out that man not only do they take the kyber crystals but they took like all the resources and they literally stripped down the planets and so Lyra was like super she was very uh, aggravated and she was almost like terrified at one point and she was just like no man the empire just uses people to do to to their own gain and she's she's like i said she's my second favorite character that's in this book and it's because she is so she's very skeptical and she's the one who she's the one who sets up their escape which is so awesome and it's like 
it when you when you when you get all of what, how Galen is, he's very smart, yes, but he's smart in that he's more of like book smart and he's like formula smart. The book explains it very very well actually that he's a very intelligent person as far as research goes but as far as people go he he's not as good as reading people at reading people as his wife is and that's why Lyra is so fun like so fun in this book because she is like she's the social person she's the one who figured out that Krennic was not you know not using Galen for something good and she was awesome in this book she was like an adventurer in this book almost like a, not quite but almost like a lady indiana jones where the book describes her past before she met galen um the book describes it as like she was always taking hikes and going to systems like and one that's one thing that i um really enjoyed was that the inner core has like 50 wonders like like the seven wonders of the world that we have like the inner core or the core has like 50 wonders the middle the middle rim has like 30 and then the 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 outer reaches or the outer rim has like 20 and she's been to like five of the 50 like six of the of the 30 and then she went to like 12 of of the 20 and it's just so cool the the expansiveness of this universe is why i love it so much and why i read these books and she's like lyra is just an awesome adventurer she's so cool and Jin is cool man Jin is like she's like three years old to like six years old in this book and man does she do a good like she does a lot she it's exactly what you would think like humans yeah parents have a hard time with their kids it's no different for galen and lyra like they have a they, it's it jen was a handful because you know she was she was more like her mother and that she was she was wanting to do things you know rather than study and it was so cool or not study but she wanted to do things like physically whereas not you know be that uh, intellectual type of person she was more of a physical type of person it was just so cool to see or to hear about a young Jin and the way the way she just thought and the way she she impacted these people like the Urso's lives in such a such a crazy way and at one point like Krennic was like you know this kid's not the greatest thing for Galen because all Krennic wanted and it totally shows even in the movie like this is something that's super consistent between the book and the movie is that Krennic just wants Galen for who he is you know and he wants Galen to be the person who's like he wants Galen to pretty much get him a promotion is all he wants Galen for and it's it's an amazing book like this and I just like that Krennic was like he was kind of always trying to get Lyra and Jin away from Galen because he knew that Lyra was skeptical. He knew that Lyra was if there was something that was going to stop Galen, it was going to be his family. And so he was like, you know what? You guys can take this expedition. Why not take the child, too? It was so awesome to see. And I loved Krennic and the, like I said, Haas Obit is one of the coolest characters. I love Tarkin in this book. He was so cool. We get we didn't get a lot of him, but what we did get it was awesome. James Lucino does an amazing job with this book. The one thing that I feel like made the book not as good uh, or not one of my favorites uh, from the new canon. The thing is just like there's a lot of talk about engineering and what Galen is doing with the kyber crystals, which is fine. I mean, I'm not I'm not like, ah, this is dumb. I don't need to I don't need to know about this. I I was fine with knowing about it, but to me it felt like just a lot of information about something that yeah, I don't know about, but it's like a lot of information about things that or something that to me I re I don't I didn't really retain a lot of that information that they told me about what's what they were doing with the kyber crystals and why they were so destructive. To me I didn't get a lot of that and I didn't retain a lot of that, but I still enjoyed this book very much. That was just one thing I think I think because it was a a more of a character study rather than like a, you know let's let's have a war during this book or something like 
or let's have politics or something like that this this book relied upon the engineering side of Galen and it was it just to me it didn't it wasn't my cup of tea but if it's you know I'm not it's not a fault thing it's just something that I personally didn't enjoy as much as the rest of the book with what with what they were doing I felt like if if you cut if you cut a little bit of that, of that out and you focus on like their the character dynamics with each other I feel like I would have liked it a lot more but still I very much enjoyed this book and it's just an amazing read I mean go ahead and pick this up I I love audiobooks and I pretty much do all of my books through audiobooks and through audible because it's just so good I mean you get you get the different voices for different people and you get the music and you you just get so much more I feel like when you're doing audiobooks like I've done I've done um I've read books like I read uh life dead and uh, it was good but to me I was just like you know I miss I miss the music in the background I miss the dude reading to me and giving me the different voices in the, the music so if if I you know I'm recommending that you if you haven't already read this book and you really much you very much enjoyed Rogue One and want to get more more of not any of our other characters it's mostly uh the Ursos and Krennic and Tarkin and you do have this new character Has Obit you get a little bit of Saw Gerrera but it's mostly about the Ursos Tarkin Krennic and Has Obit so yeah if you want to learn more about the other characters this is probably not the book that you should pick up but still I if you really enjoyed Rogue One and want to know more about these characters I would say definitely definitely pick this up whenever you can it's probably price has probably gone down but you know if if money is not an option, go ahead and audible this thing because audible is like the best. Well, that's my review of the Rogue One or Catalyst, a Rogue One novel by uh, written by James Lucino. Came out last year. I love this book, but if you've read this book. Why not tell me that in the comment section down below and tell me your thoughts on the book. This is a little bit, not a little bit, a lot longer of a video, but it books are usually books are a lot longer than movies and so it was about like four three 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 fifty three sixty pages i i'm not sure about that because like, again i audibled it so i don't know it was like 13 hours 12 12 13 hours and so but yeah tell me what you thought about the book or you know tell me what what if you're gonna read this book or if you're not gonna read this book tell me just talk to me in the comments down below I mean I love Star Wars I want to talk about Star Wars I want to talk with other people about Star Wars and I want this to be a discussion so it can't be a monologue I need dialogue so I need you to tell me what you think and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one of you know talking Star Wars trailer reactions movie reviews whatever whatever we do whatever you tell me to do i'll try to do it whatever i want to do whatever comes into this mind i'll just do it and and we'll see where it goes from there subscribe if you want to get notified every time i put up a new video and thank you for watching this one